Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Ken Wiederhorn's movie, Shockwaves. Um, now, this was a 1977 zombie film uh, during that sort of great boom period of the late 60s into the 70s after uh, George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, where people were like, ah, oh, zombies are super cool. Let's make a bunch of not very good movies about them. Um, so Shockwaves is in that tradition. It's not a not a fantastic movie. It's not a fantastic zombie movie necessarily, but there is one thing about it that I think is really, really interesting, uh, even to today. So uh, basically, the, the, the basic premise of Shockwaves is Gilligan's Island, but with more Nazi zombie super soldiers. Though, to be fair, even one Nazi zombie super soldier would be more than was in Gilligan's Island. But we'll set that point aside. Um, basically, you have this, um, this ship out cruising the Caribbean, um, captained by the uh, very curmudgeonly John Carradine. Um, the ship has several passengers. Um, it's got, uh, let's see, Brooke Adams, who plays Rose, who's the attractive young woman who has a kind of relationship with Keith, the helmsman, uh, played by Luke Halpin. You've got uh, Norman and Beverly, who are a married couple. Uh, Norman is very, like, err. I'm unhappy about things, and I'm going to take matters into my own hands, even though I'm middle-aged stockbroker type with no actual ability to do any of the things I want achieved. Um, and then you've got Chuck, who's this sort of 70s athletic guy in his, like, yellow tank top and short shorts. He likes climbing trees and whatnot. Um, and, and actually... Uh, Chuck kind of becomes the downfall of the group later on. But, uh, so they're, they're going around there, you know, on this boat. The boat is not very good. Um, the engine keeps breaking down, etc., etc. Then they crash into to a reef that they didn't realize was there um, because out of nowhere, there was a giant ship in the ocean that was coming right at them. And so Keith desperately tries to turn the ship and they crash into this reef. So they get basically marooned on this island. Um, John Carradine dies immediately in unexplained circumstances. And then they're just like, well, whatevs, guess he's dead. No need to worry about that at all. Um, so they go up to this creepy old hotel, abandoned hotel. Um, they're wandering around and then they are, are challenged by the voice of Peter Cushing. Um, famous as Grand, uh, what is it, Grand Moff Tarkin? Yeah, Grand Moff Tarkin. I got it right. Uh, for some reason, I always have trouble remembering his character name from, from Star Wars. Um, but yeah, Peter Cushing is like, what are you doing in my hotel? Go away. And they're like, yeah, but actually we're going to sleep here because our boat was wrecked. And he's like, shut up and go away. It's a thrilling exchange. Um, then he's all like off being mysterious and like wandering around the woods and whatnot. And they're like, well, they, cause they, they had told him there was a boat out there. That was just an old wreck. There's just moored on the reef. And he was like, Hmm. Then he wanders off. Then we start seeing up out of the ocean come these crazy fucking Nazi zombies who are just like walking along underwater and whatever. Um, and it turns out that um, the SS commander, Peter Cushing, uh, had been in charge of a squad of specially engineered zombie super soldiers. Um, the premise of them was that they would be absolutely ruthless in battle. Um, they would just kill people with their bare hands rather than weapons. So there were no like ammunition issues, materiel shortages, etc., etc. 
but there were problems with them in that they just ended up killing anybody. They weren't really, like, you couldn't really direct them at the enemy so much as anybody around, including other Nazi soldiers, they would murder. Um, so, at the end of the war, the Germans tried to sort of make sure that none of this would be found out. Um, Peter Cushing's unit was a, a an ocean-based unit. They, they attacked from water. And so, he just, like, took them out in a ship to the Caribbean, I guess. And when no orders ever came for what to do, because the war had ended... He sunk the ship with the, the zombie super soldiers in it, and he just, like, lived on this island until 1977, when this random group of Gilligan's Island-style castaways shows up, at which point the zombie Nazi super soldiers all wake back up for no apparent reason. Uh, there's no real reason given for why they are suddenly reawakened. My suspicion is it's supposed to just be like the proximity of the the tourist's boat wakes them up, but it's not really explained. Um, so the Nazi zombie super soldiers start coming up onto the island, and they just start murdering the the tourists. The tourists are running around. They're like, "Oh, zombies! Fuck!" Um, Peter Cushing has told them that there's a boat that they could try and sail, uh, try and sail to the nearest island, which is a two-day sail from there. So they do attempt to take that boat out, but when it hits a it hits a mud bank, and so they all get out of the boat to like drag it across. Um, but then, as they're doing that, Rose gets back in the boat, um, so she could escape. But then Beverly trips as they're like pushing this boat across the, the thing, so they so they have to go back for Beverly. And then the boat is just sailing away with Rose in it, and she's like, I don't know what to do. And Keith is like, turn the boat around. And she's like, um, instead I'm gonna get hit by the sail and knocked into the water. Uh so then they're all back on the island, no means of escape. And they're just sort of getting picked off slowly by these Nazi zombies. They do figure out that if you just pull the goggles off of the Nazi zombies, they're like, ah, the light, now I'm dead. Um, which actually seems like a major design flaw if you're trying to build an invincible super army. But, you know, there you go. That's, that's Nazi engineering for you. So eventually uh, it's down to uh, Rose, Keith, Chuck, and Beverly. And they decide that they are going to take refuge in a, a large walk-in fridge. Chuck is not a big fan of this. Turns out he has pretty severe claustrophobia, so he's freaking out. Uh, he's like, let me out. I've got a flare gun. I'll, I'll shoot you with this flare gun. Um, and and uh, Keith doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to open the door because that sound might alert the Nazi zombie super soldiers to where they are. Eventually, um, there's an altercation, the flare gun is fired, Beverly is blinded, uh, Chuck just sort of runs out and is just running around randomly, uh, Keith and Rose end up just abandoning Beverly and end up taking shelter in an old boiler, uh, Chuck and, and Beverly both get killed off, finally, uh, Keith and Rose... Yeah, Keith and Rose um, go back to the one uh, little dinghy that they had used to escape their ship initially, the lifeboat. Um, and they're like rowing out to sea to try and escape. And then a couple of different Nazi zombies come up out of the ocean and grab Keith. The first one he successfully fights off by removing the goggles. The second one manages to kill him. So Rose is just like, no! And then she just sort of goes catatonic and drifts around in this boat for who knows how long. It actually can't have been more than about two or three days because that's the maximum amount of time a human being can go without water. So we do have that as a, a sort of general timeline. But basically, uh, she's just sort of randomly drifting around. So all of that is fairly, fairly basic. 
Uh, it's a it's a zombie movie as such. It's not incredibly interesting. It's not especially gory by the standards of a zombie movie, largely because the main main way that these Nazi zombie super soldiers kill their victims is by drowning. There is a lot of underwater work, so I don't know if they just got people who could hold their breath a really long time, or if they had like, I don't know, some sort of in-the-mouth respirator that, that isn't visible from outside the mouth and doesn't produce bubbles as you breathe. But there's a lot of camera work done underwater of just like Nazi super soldiers walking around underwater and just hanging out underwater and no bubbles from their noses and mouths. I don't know how they did that, but it's cool. It's kind of a cool effect. Not a cool enough thing that it makes the, the zombie aspect of the movie interesting. For the most part, the zombies are just sort of like walking around, standing and looking at stuff. Yeah, they're menacing because they're Nazi zombie super soldiers, but... I mean, we don't get any scenes of them, like, eating human flesh. We don't get any, like, really brutal murders. We just... Like, the, the most brutal murder that we get is of Dobbs, the alcoholic ship's cook. But even then, the brutality is not because of the Nazi zombies. It's because he he takes off his shoes while he's well, he's gone to get some canned food, and he ends up in backing away from one of the Nazi zombie super soldiers. He ends up stepping into a patch of sea anemone, and then he just like falls on his face, and he's like, "Oh, my face is full of anemone spines, and now this Nazi zombie super soldier is drowning me. It's a bad fucking day for Dobbs." But that's not that gory by the standards of zombie movies. It's it's fairly, it's a bloodless zombie movie in that sense. But what I actually do find really kind of existentially disturbing is the framing of the film, the beginning and the end portion. Because the movie begins with these two fishermen, the, this this what we presume is a, a father and son, a, a, an adult and a kid, out on a, a fishing boat, and they spot this dinghy floating, and they pull Rose off it, just like sunburned, lips parched, still catatonic, basically. Um, and we get this voiceover from Rose, where she says something like, um, I have no idea how long I floated in that boat. All I can remember is the sound of waves. Then I heard the motor coming closer. And in the in the intro portion, there's actually a little bit more where she says something like, I had no I had no conception that what they were trying to do was rescue me. So we get that, and then we flash back and we get the whole story of this island. But then at the end of the movie we come back to that. We see we see uh, Rose catatonic in the dinghy get that same voiceover. I have no idea how long I floated in that boat. Um, oh, I, miss, I missed a bit of it out, actually. It's, I have no idea how long I floated in that boat. Um, all I can remember is the sound of waves. All, all I could remember was the sound of waves. Then I heard the motor coming closer. I wish I could have told them what happened, but it's only now that I remember any of it. So we get that voiceover at the beginning, along with the I, have no, I had no conception they were trying to rescue me bit. But then at the end, we return to that. We get that voiceover. We get an image of her in the dinghy after Keith has just died. Then we shift to her in a hospital bed after she's been rescued. And she's sitting up in bed. She appears to be writing on a notebook. And so we think, okay, what we have here is she is writing out what happened to her. We get that voiceover on a loop. And we start to pan in toward her. And the camera starts to turn around. And what we, what we finally see is that while this voiceover is going on, this voice that we now recognize is in her head, She's actually not writing. She's just doing 
incoherent, meaningless scribbles across the page as though she's writing. She's even doing it left-handed, and I don't, I don't, I never noticed earlier in the movie, but I, I don't know that she's left-handed. Um, but it doesn't necessarily look like a supernatural way for her to be writing. I actually find that really fascinating as a as a bizarre existential kind of kind of terror um, because what it suggests like normally the idea is okay she's been rescued now she can heal and sort of go back to her life and what this ending raises the question of is can she can she heal or has is she in fact another victim of these nazi zombie super soldiers 